Hello, my friends, and welcome to another Living Word broadcast. I'm Pastor Dwayne McFetters, and I'm so glad to be able to come before you on today. Let's go to the throne of grace and ask God to bless the message on today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless you, and we praise your holy and righteous name. Father, I ask that you would bless, strengthen, and encourage each and every person that have tuned in. Every person, oh God, that's going through, every person that may be sick in their body, if there's anyone, Lord, that may not be saved, I ask that you would save them on today. I ask that you would word my mouth, Father, and give me what to say and how to say it. Only with the spirit of love, Lord, that it might bless those that hear. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you right now. Give me clarity of speech and explanation, Lord. And Lord, you be lifted up. You be glorified, Lord. Not unto us, not unto us, Lord, but unto you, unto your righteous and holy name. Father, and I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless each and every one of you. The Bible declares that this is the day that the Lord have made. Let us rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. God is so good. He's been so good to each and every one of us. Amen. And even he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So for that, we, we thank God. Amen. I'm going uh, right into the scripture today. I'm going to the, the uh, first John, the, the uh, uh, first chapter and verse five. I'm going to start there and I'm going to use for a subject on today. Always remember that sin is the problem, but God is the answer. Always remember that sin is the problem, but that God is the answer. Amen. Amen. We're living in a world today that's, uh, uh, you don't have to uh, turn on your, your radio or your TV or whatever it is, but we know that the world, uh, just because of the tension that's in the air, is in a mess. And uh, as a result of that, uh, God's humanity is in trouble. Amen. There's a great problem. And there's some, a songwriter wrote a song one time with the world needs to lie out now is love, sweet love. Yeah, and, and that's the only thing that there's not enough of. And we know that the Bible declares that God is love. Amen. And so if there's a problem, and I just believe that love can fix it. But we have to have a love, first of all, for God. And once we love God, we can love one another. We can stop all the division and the hatred and all the chaos and turmoil that's going on in the world today. And we know the scripture when it says that if my people, we already know what it says, if my people, who are, which are called by my name, we would humble ourselves and pray, turn from our wicked ways. And, and we know what the scripture says. But let's go to the scripture. And it says this in the fifth verse of... of um, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Amen and amen. And the, and the sixth verse says this. Don't, don't, don't nobody get upset. It says if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Now, I don't know how you think of yourself, but I'm reading the Word of God to you. 1 John 1 and 9 says this, and most people, we quote this all the time in churches. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. If we say that we have not sinned, 
we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. So deflate your chest and understand that all have sinned and fallen short, or come short, amen, of the glory of God. And so we ought to be thanking God today that he has made a way out, that he has given us an answer to the problem. Now, from the scriptures I just read, it's plain to see what the problem is. The problem is sin. When sin entered into the world, everything, the, the plan that God had, everything changed. Amen. And we've been dealing with sin ever since. But thank God that he is there. You see, he doesn't have no desire that no man, woman, boy, or girl be lost. In other words, God wants us to make it. Amen. And we should want each other to make it. Now, watch this. It says in the, in the second chapter, it says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. Amen. So, that ye sin not. So, if we, if we understand this concept, and understand the trickery and the deception of the enemy. He wants you to think that because you sinned, because you messed up. And he wants you to add up all your sins and pile them up on yourself and say, Oh, what a terrible, wretched person that I am. But God says, if you be willing, if you first have a willing mind, he said he would cleanse us, there it is, from all unrighteousness, if we would confess our sins. I think sometimes we get caught up in other things and and we don't hear enough sometimes about the problem. And the problem is sin. That's why things are the way that they are. It's because of sin in the world. God is the answer. Love is the answer, which God is. Amen. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. Watch this. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now I want you to say this again. And if, that's a contingency word, any, no matter who you are, man sin, that goes for men, women, no, no gender. We have an advocate, an advocate, a lawyer. Uh, somebody that rep will represent us uh, with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You see, he, he came uh, uh, to this world. He came to earth with a specific purpose in mind, and that was to deal with this problem of sin. And he is the propitiation for our sins the substitute for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the, for the sins of the whole world. St. John 3 and 17, we know St. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that 17th verse says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, we got to see the heart of God. We got to see the love of God for his creation, his creation that he made, that they made in, in, in their image, in their likeness. We got to see that. We got to see God in the right way, in the right way that God is not some in, a, a deity standing over with a sledgehammer ready to beat us down. God understands and he knows the nature of this flesh. He knows what it is. He knows what it is to be human. That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ went through everything that we could ever conceivably go through in this life. And yet he did it without sin. Come on, somebody. Amen. So God knows. And so when Jesus, when we mess up, when we sin, Jesus is our, our lawyer. And he goes and he, he, he's, he's our representative and he explains it. And God, if God listens to anybody, he listens to his, his son. Amen. Come on now. And where, hereby we know 
that we know him, as that word again, if, if we keep his commandments, if we keep his commandment, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Yes, a liar. And God hates a liar. And the truth is not in him. When you see somebody that every every word out of their mouth is a lie, don't you don't you put any confidence. Judge Judy said this. Everybody pretty much knows Judge Judy. Judge Judy says, if you come in my courtroom and you tell me a lie, he, she said, from that point on, I don't believe nothing else you say. <laughs> it's something to that. Come on here. And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Amen. We have people lying to us every day on the TV. People in the, in the White House lying. People in the State House lying. People lying everywhere. Lies, 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 lies. To try to persuade you to go this way or that way. And the only, only thing about a lie, a lie is usually for the purpose of persuading you to go the wrong way. Amen. And if you really don't know the truth, then that means you don't know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, you're probably going to end up, I read this quote one time, if you don't know where you're going, you're probably going to end up somewhere else. And somewhere else is usually where you don't want to be. I'm going to let you chew on that. Amen. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Or let's say completed. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Jesus is our prime example. No greater example can you and I have than Jesus Christ himself. A man who disrobed himself from his heavenly estate and came down here to show mankind. This is the way that you do this. Brethren, I write n no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which he had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. It's not new. Again, a new commandment I write unto you. Which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness, somebody ought to be shouting, is past. And the true light now shineth. Amen. The answer came by way of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The problem has always been sin, but the answer will always be God and his son. And that's why he came in the first place. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother, here it is. God is dealing with humanity now. I want you to understand that when you have people that are constantly trying to cause chaos and divide you and, and cause a havoc all around you, cause a unrest, uh, try to take your peace, try to cause fear to overtake you. Uh, the, God, the Bible says that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love and the power and of a sound mind. You see, fear has torment, and God doesn't want us to be walking around tormented. Amen. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother, hateth his brother, is in darkness even unto now. Amen. Hatred is a terrible thing. Hatred is a thing that would eat you from the inside out. Hatred is a thing that will cause you to never have peace. I don't care how much money you got, what type of position you hold, what title you have, or whatever it is in life. If there's hatred inside of you, you will be constantly tormented the rest of your life. Amen. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no, none occasion of stumbling in him. Amen. You know where you're going. Amen. You have a goal. You have a sight. Amen. You, you're focused on God. 
in the things of God. You see, my friends, we are, we are agents. We should be agents of love. We should love what God loves. Amen. We should love the things that God loves. We should love people, first of all. But our first priority is to concentrate and focus on our love for God. And God will help us in any situation, in any circumstance. There's all types of people in the world. There's some people that's easier to love than others. But that doesn't take away from the fact that we still must love. That we still must do this thing God's way. Amen. Because God created humanity and he loves humanity. That's why he sent his son in the first place. Amen. Amen. Watch this. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Amen. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven, forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him, that is, from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I write, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him, that is, from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Ah, and then the Bible says this. Remember this title this morning. Remember the subject matter. Amen. Sin is the problem, but that God is the answer. Love not the world, which is full of sin. Neither the things that are in the world. And here it is. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see, we're going to leave this place. We didn't come here to stay. You can get tangled up and tied up in this if you want to. But there's going to come a time when you're going to have to leave all this. But then what? But then what? For all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Amen. Amen. And like I said before, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That ought to encourage somebody. There's your answer the love of God in our hearts and for all mankind. That's what it's all about. So if you want to know what the, what the answer is, turn to, your, turn to your Bible. Turn to God. All the answers of life are right here in this book. God loves us so. He's concerned about us. He cares about us. And there's nothing that God will withhold from us, that will be a blessing to us, and that will draw us to him. Amen. Amen. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know just because you messed up yesterday, last week, last month, I don't want you to, 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 to get, get in the habit of adding up all your faults and your, and your stumbles and your, and your sins and bury your own self. You see, you don't have to trouble, trouble, because trouble, amen, don't need no help. And the enemy is the one that brings the trouble. Jesus came that we might have life, yay, and that more abundantly. That's why he came. But the devil wants to keep things confused. He wants to keep us in the state of sin. If, and even in sin in our hearts and sin in our minds. But God said, just turn to me. Turn to my word. Practice and, and adhere to my commandments. And the love of God will shine through. And we'll see a great breakthrough and a great change in our world and in our country. And, but that's what it's all about. Until we deal with sin, there will always be the problem of sin. 
until we deal with it. And there's only one way to deal with it, and that's turning to God. Which brings me to this. If there's anyone listening today that's not saved, in other words, you haven't turned your life over to God, you haven't surrendered to God, I want you to know that no message is, I believe, that no message is complete until the opportunity is presented for someone to be saved if they're not. Amen. If someone is a backslider, God, with open arms, he wants to receive you back. The story about the prodigal son is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Amen. I, because it just shows the grace and the mercy of God. How that God is ready, able, and willing to receive you back. And he used the father and son situation. And the same God who said his father saw him from afar off coming back. And so if you're a backslider, come on back. Come home. Come home. God, God, God is not going con, to con, condemn you. He's not going to scold you and turn you away. Amen. So listen, if you, uh, that person, I want you to repeat after me these words. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, but I'm sorry for all of my sins, for everything I ever said, done, or thought, or even imagined that displeased you in any way. I ask your forgiveness right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me, and wash me, cleanse me with your precious blood, and I shall be new, I shall be whiter than snow. And then after that, Lord, help me to live the life that you created me to live, that I might glorify you with my life. And I thank you for it right now. I believe that you uh, hung on the cross and you died for my sins and that as a result of that, I no longer have to be uh, imprisoned by the sins. I thank you for your forgiveness and I receive it right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, if I'm that backslider and I'm coming home, I'm coming back to you. I thank you, oh God, for receiving me. I thank you, Father, for giving me another chance in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise you. Amen, and amen, and amen. Praise the Lord, amen. If you prayed that prayer, either as a backslider or as a person coming to the Lord for the first time, I want you to know that God is a holy and righteous God. Amen, and he loves you and he receives you. Amen, praise God. But I will tell you this, that you must follow through. Amen. That you must read your Bible. You must talk to God, pray to God, meditate on God. Uh, do those things which are necessary to do. If there's any unforgiveness in your heart or against anybody or anything that's in that way, we, you need to go get that straight. Amen. After getting straight with God. So we thank you and we bless you on today. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. Amen. Living Word Church, I want you to uh, be encouraged like never before. I want you to keep your head up and amen. Know that God is for us and God will keep us. And I'm looking forward to uh, it in some way or form of getting back into our church. But I'm yet praying. I'm yet being patient and waiting on God to give me the word. I know others may have went back in in different ways and different things. But Amen. Uh, I must listen to God concerning us. And, and so you all continue to pray for me and pray for the church. And let's, by all means, pray for one another. Amen. Remember, Mother Bettis uh, uh, left uh, for California on yesterday. And, and so we're going to miss her, but she's going out there to be live with one of her other daughters. And so we want to keep her up in prayer. And remember all of those that are on our prayer list that may be sick and and going through. Remember my son Dwayne, amen, the situation he's dealing with. And, and so there's so much to pray for. And But we thank God that we can come to him because he's our answer. Amen. So we always remember, amen, that sin is the problem, but God is the answer. Y'all be encouraged and let us close out with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word on today. I thank you, oh God, for speaking to my heart and giving me to give the people what you gave me. 
And I pray, O oh God, that you continue to bless and strengthen all the people at the Living Word Church. And, and not only at our church, Lord, but every church, every place that every preacher that's preaching your word, Lord, every person that's striving to live for you, O oh God. God, we thank you right now. God, we thank you for all that you've done, for what you're doing right now, and for what you're going to do, Lord. We know that this thing uh, that's going on in our world, there's nothing too hard for you, Lord, and that you are able to fix it whenever you get ready. And we thank you right now, oh God. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, now, Lord, cause us to keep our minds stayed on you, that we might have peace. Give ye that perfect peace which passes all understanding. God, let that peace rule, rule our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And we're going to be careful, Lord, to continue to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in your son Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you, and God keep you and yours. And this is Pastor Max signing off, and we'll see you next time. God bless, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.